Hey everybody, let's talk a little bit about, more about this Malabrigo Mega Cowl, I'm calling it. Uh, you can see here, uh, I've been wearing it folded, um, and it's actually around 24 inches around and 10 inches tall. I thought I'd show you how to uh, knit this, uh, this time maybe with the Rasta yarn, which is a more solid color and you might be able to see a little bit easier. There are two types of rounds in this project. There are setup rounds and there are knit uh, three together rounds. Here I am on a setup round. How do I know that I'm setting it up? Because I see the yarn over, which means that my last round, I worked that knit three together. And it's actually pretty easy to see that huge bulky stitch. So that means that I'm going to knit knit and you'll see with this a yarn this big I'm not necessarily finessing it I'm just trying to uh, get the get the stitches worked now we're going to slip purl wise right and then when you're here give this a nice little tug and then knit around there are five stitches in between the slip stitches and I just want to get to where I can show you the end of the round. Here's the slip stitch. Again, I'm going to manhandle it a little bit. And now I'm coming to the end of the round. Now I don't use end of route round uh, markers in this pattern because the spiral changes so often. So how do I know I'm getting to the end of the round and it's time to start my knit three together round? First of all, the tail is going to be the tip when you get with the hint. When you're getting around to the tail, it's going to be time to start knitting three together. I'm also going to take a peek here. This, is, this yarn over has been worked, which means it's time to add a yarn over. So here now is my knit three together. And we're really going to just grab that in there, work the knit three together, Give it a tug. And now one of the things I like about this pattern is it has very large supported eyelet stitches. And the way that's worked is we have to do a double increase. The first increase is a yarn over and the second increase is a knit one back and front. This is a little different from a knit one front and back that you're used to. Uh, it sits better in the uh, fabric and it's very simple to work. First, you're going to reorient the stitch, knit one into the back, and then come around and knit one normally into the front. Let's do that again. Pattern calls, I'm gonna knit two stitches. Here's my knit three together. I know that this slipped line here is always the leftmost stitch of the knit three together. I'm going to knit in a very big bulky yarn the knit three together. Yarn over. Now let's do this a little more slowly this time. Slip as if to purl and put it back on the needle. Right, so now it's oriented backwards. Knit into the back. See how I can pulling this to give myself some space, and now knit into the front. Okay, so now we're coming to the end of the decreased knit three together row. I know because there's my tail, um, I can tell that I need to work one more knit three together yarn with the increases because there's no yarn over there. I also want you to notice that when I got to the end of that round, there's only three stitches here between. Normally, when you work the knit three together, yarn over, my two increases, knit two, knit three together, there are five stitches between. On the decrease round, when you knit that three together, it shifted over, but you hadn't had time yet to add the uh, related increases on this side. So don't worry if you see those three, just those three stitches. So now we're going to knit three together. 
yarn over. I'm going to work the reorient and the knit into the back loop kind of in one motion there. And now I know that it's time to start the setup round, the slip round, because there's a yarn over. I'm not going to yarn over twice in a row. So now I knit my two stitches. I slip this next stitch. Always give it a good tug. I've now, <clears throat> excuse me, I've now corrected the five stitches there. And now I just continue to knit five and slip one. So now we're getting to the end of the project. I've just completed a knit three together round. I can see here's my knit three together, yarn over the two increases. Here's my tail so I know I'm at the beginning and there's the yarn over so I know it's time uh, I've just finished the round. The bind off is worked over two, two rounds plus the bind off. So I wanna make sure I still have plenty of yarn left. Uh, in this particular yarn, I've worked eight sets of showy decreases. It's easier to count these raised lines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the eighth is on the needle. The next round calls for, uh, it's a B stitch, it's a version of garter. So we would purl, since we're in the round, we would purl the next round. However, since we haven't had any purl stitches yet, why ruin that trend? What I'd like to do is instead is turn around and knit the, knit the row. So I'm gonna just knit one more row, slip one stitch, bring the yarn to the front, slip the stitch back. And now let's just turn around. We don't do this very often in uh, knitting in the round, but it just does seem to me that it would be much easier for you to now knit one round. And you'll see that that slip stitch, we kind of wrap this stitch, it's just gonna prevent a big gap. Let's see what happens. Now we're end, at the end of the knit round. I have two more stitches to knit. There's knit this stitch, and then that last stitch, which was the wrap stitch. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn again. Yes, I am turning in the round. I can see here that I have all my pearl bumps. And so now I'm going to work a knit one, knit one row below. It's a, a simple variation of garter. Uh, my goal is to knit one row below into this slipped line. So I'm not gonna wrap this time because I know that my bind off is gonna keep everybody connected. So I'm gonna knit one, knit one row below, knit one. Let's just take a peek at the knit one row below. If I was to normally knit, I would go into here. What I'm looking for is that hole from the row below. So instead of knitting here, I'm going to put my needle into that hole and knit. And when you pull this, this is a very thick yarn. It really does need to be manhandled. You can see that it creates this kind of tented stitch. So I, I say to myself to remember up, down, up down. Here's a good check because I'm going row below into that line, up and down. So let me just quickly finish this row. So I've worked my knit one, uh, knit one into the row below until I've come to one stitch before the end of the round. Uh, now I'm going to, remember I didn't wrap that stitch because I didn't care. We're going to work a knit two together bind off in this case. I don't want that uh, smooth edge from a standard bind off. So we're going to knit two together. This yarn is always interesting. Move the stitch back to the needle. Knit two together. As always, keep this loose, right? Move the stitch back. Knit two together. Let's do one more. Move this back, knit two together. So let's just take a quick look and see what that looks like. All right, so I can see I kind of have that little bit of a wrapped edge. I'll be back when I'm done. So I finished my bind off. Just want to show you that nice rolling edge. 
But more importantly, I want to show you the difference between this project and this project. They are both Malabrigo yarns. This is the Rasta. This is the Carousel. Uh, they're both 90 yards. This is two to two and a half stitches per inch. This is 2.25 stitches per inch, right? Should be, based on the label, relatively similar, and they're not. And that's why we're always telling you to swatch. Look with this much more relaxed yarn, how much large, how much taller the cowl is than with this very dense, thick Rasta yarn. Um, this is basically a stocking net uh, cowl, so it is going to want to roll a little bit. I have not blocked this yet. I'm going to give it a really good wet blocking to try to relax it. This, which is the uh, yarn that the pattern was designed for, you can see I have a lot more uh, rounds in here, and it's a very nice loose uh, cowl, which is why we can fold it, eliminate any rolling issues, and kind of make it like a little collar. Hope this helps. I can't wait to see your projects.